Hello, my name is Mahdi Askari and I'm a solution architect with Databricks. I would like to take you through Databricks Delta Live tables and how do we build and automate a reliable ETL on Delta Lake. Before we start in our Delta Live table discussion, let me walk you through a high level architecture of Databricks Lakehouse platform. Databricks offer a Lakehouse platform built on top of three hyperscalers and cloud providers. You can deploy Databricks Lakehouse on AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Um, the Databricks Lakehouse enables you to ingest structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data, and also streaming to an open data lake layer. Having Delta Lake sitting on the top create a level of data management and governance. And regardless of the profile of user, whether you are a data engineer or a data scientist or an analyst or a machine learning expert, you can use Databricks Lakehouse to perform your daily tasks. Part of our discussion today is focusing on the data engineering and how Databricks Lakehouse and Delta Lake enable you to build more reliable data pipelines. So let's start with the concept of Lakehouse. Essentially, uh, Databricks has been building um, Lakehouse for the last couple of years. What we looked at the traditional architectures and data management platform, we realized there are many duplication of data and data movement. And the reason for that was the type of use cases that you wanted to run on a data warehouses are not built for those things. If you were running a machine learning, if you're ingesting semi-structured or unstructured data, the data warehouses weren't, weren't ready. But also the data lakes weren't ready. So you could have not run high performance BI queries. You couldn't do any kind of a schema enforcement. So what Databricks has done, Databricks has taken all the goodness from a data warehouse and the goodness from the lakes and put it together and created a lakehouse platform. In the Lakehouse platform, the vision is you store your data once, regardless whether it's structured or semi-structured or unstructured, and use the same data in place to run your workload, whether you're doing BR reporting, whether you're doing data science and machine learning, or you're running stream analytics. And the benefit is the data is sitting in an open data platform that you can reliably access and perform um, two, three, four different type of a operations regardless of what's your role in organization. But how do we manage this? How do we brought the goodness of the data warehouse to a lake? This is where the product of Delta Lake um, is shining. It's the foundation of a lake house. It's an approach to bringing the data management and the governance and quality to the lake. So we have to build and basically take some of the functionality that you see in a data warehouse like transaction and bring it to the lake. So you can have a reliable data ingestion pipeline. Um, the concept like indexing, now Delta Lake comes with indexes. So you can actually query your lake with the same performance that you expect to get that query from a data warehouse. So you don't have to move the data yet again to another technology to, to run your reporting. And also we added layers and layers of data governance and access control on top of the lake to make sure not only you ingest quality data in the lake and be able to run your super performing fast queries on it, but also you have the level of governance and fine grain access control that you need. And that's why Delta Lake is basically a foundation of the lake house. So if you look at the flow and you know, we, in Databricks we use this medallion um, approach of like you have bronze, silver, and gold, and data quality moves as you move from one layer to another layer and it, it gets ready for consumption, this would be a, a, a flawless, perfect flow. You have sources on the left, you have a couple of um, stages that data goes through and gets cleaned up and gets ready for your query. And this is what we actually see when you look at the high level architectures. But we all know this is not the reality. The number of data sources will grow, grow. You have to start building and maintaining pipelines that involve more than one data source with different latencies and different latencies. 
at the, as the number of hops in your pipeline increase, the reliability of your hop depends on every single moving piece to work properly. And one single failure, it's going to have an impact on many, many downstream application and users. And poor reliability to a data pipeline is very expensive. So what happened that you start having complex dependencies? You have to start mixing and figuring out how do I deal with batch data? How do I deal with my streaming data? It's really hard to, to monitor and enforce data quality. And even it's harder to track the data and see how does this data lineage existed? How I started ingesting PII data or payment data. Where did that data come from? Where, are there, where in the system is data is being used? And also building and, and monitoring and recovery around that pipelines. It's very hard and it's very expensive. So essentially, this is the problem that we even with like normal Delta table, every data engineer organization has to solve. So we thought, how do we make it easier? How do we come up with the approach that take away these bits and make sure that you spend more time on actual data transformation than around it? And that's where Delta Live tables has been introduced. So it's understand the pipeline. It, uh, it builds a flow. It has automatic recovery and monitoring built into it. And many other, fe other features that if you don't use live tables, you have to build around it. But I'd like to take you through a scenario and why, and I'll show you how those features are built into a live table. So essentially this is, this can be a life as a data scientist or a data analyst. Essentially, it looks like that, hey, someone has, the CEO has set of data. They need um, some analysis. They send an email and you have to get them to it, right? So now you have a couple of data sitting somewhere in S3 bucket or somewhere in maybe GCS and you want to query that data. So how do you go about that? First thing you have to build is this is what you want to do. So as simple as that, I want to create a table on my raw data set, which is in the form of JSON. Then I want to clean the data and start doing it. So that's pretty easy, right? You can build that. You can run it on a Spark right now on, on Delta. Happy days, no problem whatsoever. But what happens that as soon as they get the report, they actually need it again and again. So now you have to build a pipeline. Now you have to build a pipeline that takes this data not only as a one-off thing, but something that gets updated and you have to make sure that the, the raw table goes first, then the clean data comes in. And then when you're merging or querying and creating like a drive views, you have to know which data is available and which data is not and time it properly. Um, and then as this grows, you realize you cannot recompute everything from scratch every day. So you start building partitions. You're gonna say, I'm gonna to process today data and yesterday data because I might have late arriving data. So you now have to do uh, basically kind of a partition computing. But as you know, uh, partition computing and everything around like any kind of operation, you need to build checkpointing and retries because um, network fails. You're com computing today's data for any reason the pipeline is break. So you have to know up to which point you have calculated it. So you start building checkpointing and retries. And then you got everything working, right? Now you ingest the data. Now you have to put quality checks on it. How do we make sure that, okay, I'm ingesting it, but how do I know this data is the way I want it to be? Not only it's a date, it's a timestamp, but it is within the range of last 10 years because that's the only data point that's valid to you. Uh, and build governance around it. Go around, tag every single table, every column, every row. This has PII, PCI, etc. And then do a data discovery. Like so, you build it. H how would other know that hey, this data is out there? Uh, I'm gonna go use it instead of rebuilding it from the scratch. So that's another thing that you have to worry about. And let's say you build all of these things, and three days later, uh, the the schema has changed. New requirements come in. So now you have to have a process to go back in time and do everything that you just did with the new requirement and that have to take care of all the changes that comes in. On top of that, like you definitely want a version control, right? Because you know you want to know what's happening, what you have been doing, and how do we go from one version to other, but also how do I deploy this? Like you want to know where is the deployment infrastructure look like? 
This is the pipeline. Each pipeline is depending on its data and its scale, timing. It has its own specific requirement on its size, number of cluster nodes, timing, SLAs, etc. So all of these things you still have to worry about. It. So um, what what happened now is you spend so much time around operational complexity. So instead of you thinking about how do I transform this, how do I make this data in its best usable format for my consumer, you have started so much, spent so much time around tooling. How do I do this? How do I do that? Which adds zero value. So you, technically, all you wanted to spend your time was, here it is, this is my source data. This is how I want to clean it and start, build, start building uh, transformation. So that's because that's the way you, that the value is, not everything around it. So this is now the problem. So let's see how do we help to solve it. So we're introducing Delta Live Table. Essentially, it's a way for you to write a production quality ETLs just using SQL for a start. So there are a couple of things that I'll have to point out and you know, things are gonna get a bit technical from here. Um, first of all, the table, when you're creating a table, it's just created as a live table. So it's a special schema. This schema is called live. And when you create a table using live schema, then the, the Databricks runtime and live table runtime will take care of a couple of things for you behind the scene. And it's all the things that we just discussed about dependencies, um, orchestration, uh, data quality, data lineage, all of those things, which I'll show you how actually it comes to the picture. So I've created a raw table, raw data from the file that sits in a bucket in a, somewhere in the cloud files. And this, again, this is a special type of source, which says my file is sitting in a folder called the slash data. There are JSON, go create this table as a raw data. And then you have a clean data, which is created on top of the raw data, right? And this is essentially how it works. So all of these two tables are now live tables, but let's see what does that mean? First of all, you can start creating more and more tables on top of the, the existing live tables. So you can have, uh, for instance, different use cases like net retention, churn risk, opportunities. Each of these tables are a derived live table that based on an existing live table. So everything in this pipeline, it's live, it's real time, and a couple of features that we just discussed around um, timing, orchestration, partition management, back fill, data quality, everything is built into this set of tables. So you have that ready and I'll go through the syntax and tell you how it basically manifests itself in, in a table definition. The other thing about this is you can actually start mix and matching uh, Python and SQL. So in this example, I have my raw data, which is like a previous example using uh, a folder called data and JSON. And then I've created my clean data on top of the raw data. But here I'm passing it to my uh, model scoring function. So um, pandas, koalas, um, any tools that you want to bring in your own like libraries of Python, we support those. So this delta dlt dot table, it says, okay, this is another table. It's a table called score records. Take my clean data and apply this function to it. So now you have mix of a Python and SQL. So you can have very sophisticated transformation built into your pipeline. Uh, while it started from SQL, you can mix and match and see how it works basically together. But how does it work? How does it work under the hood? Essentially, when you run these little pieces of SQL Python together, the, the runtime, the live runtime will go through the SQL and build a dependency graph. It understands the table flow. It understands how one table is feeding to the next table and how this pipeline essentially building on top of each other. So it analyzes and say, okay, for me to produce clean, I need to have data in raw. For me to get scored, I need to have data in clean. So, and it does, since it understands the flow, you actually get uh, a very interesting other side information from it. You can create a lineage. So you can quickly have a look and say, hey, this is how the relationship works between, between my, my tables. So, and the lineage can be visible to you in, in the tooling, say, this is how my data have moved. 
The other interesting bit is it's um, what we call the environment dependent in environment independent data management. So if you notice here, the data is not being read from a specific schema. All right, so the data is being read from this schema, which is called live, and that live schema is true regardless where you are running your workload. So you can have the same exact pipeline that you deployed in deployment or staging and production, and it works in a different environment on a different data sets without zero change. So you don't have to change anything. Literally the code that you run in the deployment, it's valid in production because there is no schema changes. There is no changes that need to be done because none of the environment is information is built within your transformation. So it's completely environment independent and that's very, very handy to move it across different environment and deployment. The other thing is like there has been a, a concept of treat your data as a code out there in a few articles here and there. We also believe that you know your data definition and your pipeline should be just more than your transformation logic. Uh, you, sh you should be able to keep a data quality there. You should be able to have a level of governance in there. You should have your documentation in there. And as you can see here in, in the slide, that's how you can define a live table. So first, you can have equality expectations. So when I'm creating my clean data, I can say I want a valid timestamp and I expect my timestamp to be greater than 1st of January 2020. So this quality expectation is attached to your data definition. And the beauty of it is you can adjust it. You can adjust the enforcement. You can say, hey, I want uh, my pipeline to fail if I have a line that basically I have a row coming in that violated this definition. Or you can say, hey, just ingest the data, but keep track of the percentage of the bad data. Or I want to redirect them somewhere else. So this is built within your table definition. And now the table carries its own quality definition with itself. Um, then you can do the documentation, right? So if you share this table with anyone and this documentation will show up in your catalog. So when you're looking at this table in the catalog, you can see the documentation, you can see the table properties and everything built into the live table. And last night at least, you can do a built-in governance. So if you start attaching attributes like has PII, has customer data, has payment information, we will bubble this information in a couple of different locations. First, you have it in your data catalog. So you can start searching based on those table properties. You can say, show me all the tables that had PII data. Show all the tables that has customer payment information data. But also you can use it for lineage. So because the pipeline goes through a live runtime and we understand the data flow and data movement, we can visually show you a chart that says, this is the flow of your data. You have ingested from these five different folders. This is the transformation you have done. And then you have created five views and one materialized view. And then you can see where and how your PII data has moved through this pipeline. It's very powerful to have a quick view visually to look at how basically your data have moved. And the like some of the example charts is it uh, dashboards that you can see on your pipeline. So if you start running um, your pipeline with um, quality expectation, you can start looking at your data, seeing okay how much of my data going to my bronze table has been uh, violated the, the the rule that I have defined. You can address the quality errors, or you can fail it. You can drop it. You can. Uh, send it to a different destination and you can visually monitor your data pipeline and the quality of your pipeline as it moves like for example in this you can see there's 21.7 percent data ingested into the bronze which they were failed record then they move to the silver it's lower and then you go to your gold table which is high quality super aggregated data sits there and you can see like visually and control and monitor your uh, pipeline using the dashboards we provide. And then the next step is you can also have a visual way of looking at your pipeline and your data flow. You can look at the operations that's happening, you can look at the success and failures of each stage and the data flow and the data lineage that goes from the source to the destination. It 
it, re it really, really helps for you to start debugging or figuring out where you have some failure in one of your stages. Also, some of these stages, they have an automatic replay and it's very easy to do a recovery and do error hand handling. And then you can take this pipeline and visually look at it and say, okay, this is where I want to drill in. This is where uh, my error has happened and basically speed up the maintenance. And once it's solved, you solve the issue, you can do a one-click deployment and you deploy the new version of the, the pipeline and the pipeline kicks in on its own and pick it up where it left. Um, essentially, this was the high level. Um, the product is out there. You can join the public preview and give it a try. Um, it really helps to enable teams to innovate rapidly and spend more time on building the, the data pipeline uh, and not spend time around the tooling and everything that you need to run the pipeline. So live tables is essentially take care of the infrastructure, the lineage, the versioning, the, the monitoring and data quality, data governance, everything is built within the pipeline and you don't have to worry about any of those things. And you can kind of scale rapidly to move data to your lake house and enable the business to query more and more data because of this rapid speed of development of how you can build ETL pipelines quickly using live tables. And the feature and functionality that gives you that you don't have to build it on your own. And thank you very much. This was uh, at a high level overview of the Delta Life table. So I'm sticking around for, uh, for questions and answers. And that's my email address. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to have a flying chat with uh, each of you and see how we can help you with your uh, data initiatives. Thank you very much.